Hi everyone, welcome to Dragon Image. Today we're doing something a little bit different. So the powers to be have, uh, me being my boss, has asked me and Bradley to create more content. Um, lately we've been kind of trying to make content in the, sh in the showroom, makes it a bit more kind of showroom-ish. Uh, previously we did them in the studio, but unfortunately it's a high studio, so it means that if people want to hire it, uh, we can't use it, which kind of gets in the way. And in the showroom, if customers walk in, we have to serve them, uh, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but this means that you know we have to pause shooting and then start shooting. Um, so we've decided to take this space that we don't really get to use that often. At the moment, it's kind of this random storage stuff. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna convert it into kind of a small kind of studio specifically for us to be able to create more content. Um, you've probably seen me on other videos where I've, you know, we've done big builds and all this kind of stuff. This is not like that. This is a temporary studio that you could, might have a space at home, you might have a space in a classroom, you might have a storage room, you might have a boardroom, you might have a space similar size to this, and you might wanna create your own content, but you don't know how and it's kind of complicated. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you. The first thing we're gonna do is obviously clean out the space, make sure that kind of we're ready to actually start kind of figuring out where things are gonna go and also uh, kind of putting it all together. Okay, so let's go. Okay, so we've cleared up most of the space. Um, so you can see behind me that it's fairly empty. Uh, what you can't see about the space is that on this side here, we have a staircase that kind of comes up. And so it's railing and stuff like that. Uh, there's a bathroom over there in that corner. Um, you can probably see that there is an air conditioner unit like right here, and there's a door here. This room, it's kind of like a server slash uh, repair room. So it has like a lot of spare parts and all that kind of stuff. But one of the things that the room has is very limited use, <laughs> which means that if we block it up for a certain period of time, it's fine. It's not going to be an issue. Um, one of the things that we we're talking about was where are we going to put the background? So at the moment we've got kind of this long ways or this short way. Um, we could potentially put a background here but that would kind of limit our ability to shoot kind of full body stuff, not that we need to, but it does give you that limitation um, and also kind of compresses everything quite a bit. Whereas if we shoot down this way, we now have the flexibility to have a lot more freedom in how we shoot. One of the things that uh, Bradley brought up was the fact that we have an air conditioning unit here. Um, one of the things that I mentioned was that we won't generally have the air conditioning on while we're shooting and a drop down background is pretty easy to pull up and down, so it's not gonna be necessarily in the way. So my idea was to position uh, the two auto poles here, they go to the ceiling, leave about a meter's gap from behind here. Uh, that allows us to you know, not have to worry so much about the air conditioner, and that still gives us plenty of length down this way. So it's one, two, three, four, about four and a half meters from where I'm standing to the railing. Um, and that's with the meter. So if I took the meter away, that would be even, uh, that would be closer to four and a half, five and a half meters. The width of the room is one, two, three, four, roughly four meters wide. Uh, and, the auto, and the auto pole in the backgrounds are about three meters or 3.3 .3 with all the mechanisms. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna position it here. I think that's probably gonna be the best bet um, and kind of go from there. Uh, just to give you a breakdown of what we're doing, um, you can see here in this 3D mock-up that I've just created, um, so this is our space that we're working with. So we're gonna put backgrounds here, and then once we've got the backgrounds there, then we can start to light the scene, and then we'll come back to the studio and have a look at that. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so we finished cleaning up the space, and after we finished cleaning up the space, what we did was we grabbed everything that we thought we'd need for the studio. So I've got some background. We're using a roller system with hooks um, and auto poles to mount them. Uh, this is a temporary environment. So because it's a temporary environment, we're not planning on screwing anything to the ceilings or, or doing anything that we can't disassemble without, uh, without having to do patching. So basically we've chosen to put the kind of backgrounds on auto poles. Uh, there's a full video on that system, by the way, if you want to know how to do it, we're just going to time-lapse it. Um, then we've also got white, black, and green. 
I do love a black background, not so much for video per se, but definitely for photography. Uh, and because this space will have the backgrounds, we could very easily bring some flash heads in here and shoot uh, photography as well as video, as well as green screen and white. So the great thing about shooting on, on green is obviously that you can basically create a virtual background. Uh, the bad thing about shooting on green is that it's a lot more work than just shooting on the color that you would like. So if we're gonna be doing a lot of stuff on white, having a white background just makes that workflow so much simpler and also allows us to kind of not light the, the, the kind of the white, uh, making it kind of an off-white color um, or adding kind of floods and stuff to it to create gradients. Okay, so we've set up our studio. We've got the background behind me. You can't really see because I'm shooting with a white background. We've got two lights on the side. These are designed to light the background themselves and we've got two lights in the front. If this was a permanent setup, I would have these mounted either to the walls or to the ceiling. I wouldn't have light stands so that I wouldn't have the footprint that comes with having light stands. Um, and because they're not gonna be moved around, they're just gonna be turned off and on. Uh, they don't need to be flexible light, light, with light stands. But because this room is not something that I want to um, hard mount things into, because again, it's a flexible space, a spare room that I happen to have access to, I decided to leave them on light stands. Uh, the same with the two front lights. So the front lights are actually on rollers. That gives me a bit of flexibility in regards to placement, uh, depending if I'm doing a table shoot or if I'm doing full body, kind of like you can see here. Uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to switch to a different color just so you can see what that looks like uh, so we can actually see how the room kind of presents. Okay. You can just keep recording. We'll speed it up and... Cool. Okay, so now I just put the green behind us. As you can see, having roller systems makes changing backgrounds extremely easy. Um, I don't have to like get stands and go up and go down. You saw it just simple rolling of backgrounds up and down. And that gives me a lot of flexibility when we're not using the space as well, where I can have them up so the door is still accessible um, and I can still use the space as a normal room. Um, with spaces like this, one of the things that, one of the kind of limitations that we have at the moment is the fact that the acoustics in this space isn't perfect by any means. Uh, the glass windows on the walls sound like they were made in the 60s. Um, with single pane glasses, so sound does travel through them. Um, the blinds themselves don't go all the way to the top, which is interesting choice. So ambient light does sneak in and having additional light in here helps kind of show that. Um, and you've also got the fact that all the walls seem to be solid concrete, um, not chip rock at all. So there's no internal absorption or insulation uh, in the actual walls themselves. So that creates also a lot of reverberation. One good thing about the space is that it's carpeted. So carpet does absorb a lot of sound that would normally travel up and down between the room. Um, but if I was looking at soundproofing the space, um, I could very easily put some MLV or some other insulation systems over the windows, add acoustic curtains to the side to help absorb all that additional ambient audio and also have a curtain behind the camera which would allow me to very easily uh, absorb sound coming from me going forward. Uh, one of the other solutions that I haven't shown today would be to use a directional and shotgun mic which would be on a boom arm kind of pointing down towards the carpet pointing at my face. Um, that would require me to be a little bit more rigid in my positioning since that microphone would not be following me around because I haven't got a sound engineer to take care of it. One of the other things about this space is we're actually running the air conditioning at the moment um, because it does get quite warm in here but as long as we record a audio channel which is not recording vocals so using that as a sample I can teach uh, audition to remove that sound from the rest of my footage. Um, what we're going to do is I'm just going to turn these lights off now and this to show you exactly how much of that ambient light is affecting our scene. Okay, that's there. And there. So now you can see it's significantly darker, but not absolutely dark. Um, but Yeah, cool. So yeah, so you can see it's, a lot, it's a significantly darker than what it was. Obviously, we're not being lit at all. Um, you can use this to your advantage. So for, for instance, if we turn our softbox on, 
Now we haven't lit our background, so the background will come out as a slightly darker color, creating a bit more drama. If I now go and switch to the black, again, just as easy as rolling down backgrounds, this system and how it's set up and everything is, there's a video on this online and it is sold as a complete kit. But now you can see that we can kind of start to create a little bit more control, a little bit more drama. If we want to fill in the other side, we'll just turn the other side on and then we have that additional fill. There we go, cool. And so now you can see that we can keep that background nice and dark, but now you can light me accordingly. And if I wanted to, I could then um, kind of <sighs> reduce the angle of that light in order to create more shadow, more contrast, more shape. Uh, I think a couple of upgrades for the space that I will be doing would be to add a hair light on one of the corners just to help separate. I was thinking about swapping over one of the backgrounds to a gray and then throwing a light on there so it looks more like unbox therapy or something along those lines. Um, we do have a little bookshelf back there so I can also set up a little scene. But in this particular case, I feel like the room is, uh, is very, very practical. We've got two couches on the side, which is comfy for us to have discussions about what we're gonna be shooting and how. We've got a trestle table, which means we can set that up, throw a sheet over it and start to shoot videos where we're unboxing things. Um, one thing, I would also do is position a second camera directly above, pointing down. There's a couple of ways to do this. Um, in this particular case, I'd probably just use a boom arm um, to come over the top. If this was a permanent space, I would mount a mount directly above the table and have that pointing down, HDMI it to an Ata Mini Pro, and suddenly I've got a multi-cam shoot. Okay, okay, I know that we said we were gonna stop there. It turns out that we couldn't stop and I couldn't stop. So we went a few steps further. So the, one of the things that we did was we've now included auto poles that are holding our backlights. Um, and we've also got an aluminum tube across the top, which is also holding a light. So that's giving us extra kind of fill behind us, uh, giving us a lot of illumination. Uh, we've also mounted a PTZ camera up there, which is pointing straight down. The great thing about PTZs is that they can be controlled via remote control, as well as the fact that this particular one is SDI out and uh, also is just powered by mains. So it's one of those things that we can turn off at the plug and you know have a preset and straight away, it gives us this kind of frame that you're seeing here. Um, it, you can zoom in and out and so forth as well. So if you wanna have more control, you can. But the great thing about the PTZ is just that PTZ functionality of being able to zoom in and control everything via remote control. Um, what we'll do is we'll end up going into a converter that will convert it to the HDMI, which will then go to an ATEM Mini Pro ISO, which will give us the ability to record all the channels and give it a lot more kind of control. Um, this cleaned up a lot of stuff uh, and made it a little bit more, I guess, studio-esque function. Um, which is great. Uh, we've got our table here for when we want to be doing these kind of pieces, the camera type of shoots. We've got a couple of couches, which I think are also helping with acoustics since they're absorbing that additional sound. But we've still got the other two um, lights at the front on stands, which means that we can move them around a bit to give us a little bit more control. Um, but yeah, so one of the things that I would potentially do if uh, I wasn't wanting to control the lights, I would probably add two more auto poles and another aluminum tube, give us a lot of ambient soft fill. Um, but in this particular case, it's not really needed for the type of shoot that we're doing. Um, but this is all temporary. This is all something that can be taken down and moved to another room at a later date. Uh, it's not something that requires a builder to set up. It may not be as pretty as some of our corporate builds, but for people out there that care more about what's in the frame than having the impression of a beautiful studio, this is functionally doing exactly the same thing. But yeah, so if you're interested in converting a space that you may already have into a studio, uh, Dragon Image can help. We don't only have you know, builders building massive builds, but we also do little things like this. Even if it's a matter of just buying the equipment and asking us how it's done, we've got plenty of videos walking you through these little steps of how to set that up. And we can also do a 3D render if you so choose at additional expense. Um, thanks for watching. If you want, have any questions or want to visit your local Dragon Image, we hope to see you soon. Bye.